Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you are new here, consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. I appreciate you checking out the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna take a look at direct routing with Microsoft Teams in Cisco's unified border element. We're gonna take a look at the high-level design, what it takes to get started, the licensing uh, that's involved, how it works at a high level, and then I'm gonna share at the end of the video some additional resources so that you can go and get this configured in your environment. With that being said, let's dive in and check it out. All right, so first things first, there's a couple key differences between direct routing and just using Microsoft-based calling. Now, obviously, Microsoft calling plans, you can get your PSTN access directly from Microsoft. I hear it's a little bit pricey, particularly in a larger organization. It might make sense to do direct routing. And what direct routing is, is something that allows you to bring your own PSTN service, uh, SIP trunk, into your organization, terminate it on a session border controller, and then have those PSTN calls extended into the Microsoft Teams you know, calling environment. In the near future, direct routing is also going to give you the option to connect calling between an on-premise PBX and the Teams you know, calling cloud as well. It's not here yet, but it's coming soon inside of Cisco's unified border element uh, as well. From a diagram perspective, you can see here there are two different PSTN clouds represented. Obviously, the first on the left-hand side is the PSTN through Microsoft provided PSTN. So that's option one. And at the bottom is option two, PSTN through direct routing. Now, how it works is your carrier will have a SIP trunk to the unified border element and that uh, the, those calls will be terminated there and then extended to the Office 365 cloud, to your tenant in the cloud. The SIP signaling will be redirected there. It's all wrapped in TLS, of course, so it's secure. And then the uh, the media stream and the signaling flows to the cloud and then back down to your Teams clients. In the first iteration, media bypass is not enabled, but that is something that is on the roadmap. It's worth noting that media always flows through the cube. Uh, and it does the cube type things, right? Terminates that media session and signaling session at the edge, uh, provides address hiding, all those types of things that you would expect with cube in really any deployment. Okay, so let's say that direct routing with Microsoft Teams using a Cisco cube is for you. We wanna verify the compatibility of your system uh, and make sure that you have the proper licensing. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. What we do for starters is uh, you have to have a supported device that runs Cube. Now it's gonna be an ISR router or an ASR router. Pretty much any ISR or ASR can be licensed to run Cube. And obviously you wanna make sure that it is sized appropriately for your environment. The other requirement is version 17.2.1 uh, R or greater is the version of software that you need to run. And this, there's more details on all of this in the configuration document, which I have in the video description below. The other option is the CSR, which is the virtual instance of the iOS XE software, uh, a virtual router, uh, if you will. From a licensing perspective, there's really nothing special about the cube licensing itself that's needed. What you need is cube-t-standard, T -dash standard, STD, or cube-t-red, -dash -dash which is the redundancy, redundancy license. So if you actually have two devices for redundancy, uh, you would need those licenses. And again, this is a standard cube configuration scenario. You do need to be able to support TLS, so it does require a security license on that base platform. And as you can see in the middle of the screen here on the left, the is the licensing output, right? Show licensing uh, information from an ISR. Uh, you need the UC license K9 as well as security license K9. So it's uh, encryption enabled essentially. On a CSR, you need the AX license, which with CSR, you pretty much get uh, all of the application stuff together and you need to do uh, one gig of throughput minimum as well as uh, four gigs of memory. So you need to make sure that those licensing options are enabled. For the ASR platform, you need to have the advanced IP services license. Uh, licensing on ASR is a little bit different. Uh, you could have a pretty big environment if you're using an ASR, but just know uh, all of that. So that's really it from a cube prerequisites perspective. I do have in the video description, a very in-depth document 
on all of this. Uh, probably the best document is direct routing for Microsoft phone system using Cisco Unified Border Element version 12.8.0. Um, so this document, again, in the video description, it's very uh, in-depth. Uh, you can see from the contents here, it goes through all the configuration, basic setup, and, and things like that. It does have a configuration example using Verizon as the PSTN provider. Now, obviously, you know, some minor tweaks and changes for your PSTN provider if it's not Verizon. But uh, it's a great document, very in-depth, 42 pages uh, to be exact. So... Again, in the video description, you can check this out and get started from there. With that being said, I wanna wish you the best with direct routing. Definitely another option to enable your organization from a collaboration perspective, a calling perspective. Uh, if you have questions, comments, other tips or tricks, leave them in the video comments section below. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope to see you back sometime soon.